Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited about this video. I'm excited about all my videos, but this one feels especially important. Um, and I've been thinking about it a lot. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you my blood test results after being 10 years raw vegan. If you're new to my channel, my name is Tumi. I am a medical doctor, a dancer, a poet, and as I just shared, I've been raw vegan now for 10 years. It's been an amazing journey, but I think as a physician, I feel called to share about my test results. I don't know how many of you have had doctors share with you their test results, but it feels really important because I think that this lifestyle, raw living foods, unfired foods, um, plant exclusive, uh, sometimes has a lot of fear associated with it. People are afraid that they may have issues long-term or short-term on it. So I wanted to share with you uh, what my test results look like after 10 years on this lifestyle. I make videos on this channel around raw veganism, around um, plant foods living, around holistic health tips in general, minimalism, um, freeform locks, self-love, all of it infused with dance. And if that is of interest to you, any of that, consider subscribing down below. So let's get to my test results. First thing I want to say is maybe talk about my diet really, really quickly. I have been a hundred percent plant exclusive diet, all plant, um, for 10 years now. I have been 99. 99.9% .9 raw during that time. I do include nuts like cashews, which sometimes are considered not raw, even if they say raw cashews. Um, and I definitely, when eating out, have had things like heated nuts, so roasted nuts. I try to avoid that um, on my salads, um, maybe sometimes toasted nori instead of raw nori, things like that. So I'm not going to claim to be 100% raw. That's not my reality. Um, but I feel amazing on greater than 99% raw. And I've been doing that now for 10 years. So let's get to my test results. I also want to say that the only supplements I take are B12 and only since I was pregnant and then breastfeeding, I'm still breastfeeding, I've also taken omega-3 and algal, um, an algae-based, uh, so all plant, uh, omega-3 DHA supplement to support the brain health of my little one. But really for the past 10 years, it's just been really been B12. And even that, mostly sporadically, um, but I've been trying to be more consistent, again, since pregnancy and now breastfeeding. Now, I can speak about blood tests for a long time. I'm a nerd in that way. I love speaking about diagnostic test results as part of my joy as a physician, but I'm a holistic physician. So what I do is I usually will guide people. I will go over their blood test results with them, their radiological tests, and then talk about holistic holistic ways of managing whatever it is that they are dealing with challenge-wise, avoiding pharmaceutical medication. I also, to round out the work I do, I also um, create healing poem dances. So dances that are crafted from original poetry that are made to support and ignite the healing process of whoever is watching them. I do that for individuals and for communities and organizations and art and healing spaces. So I work one-on-one -on -one with patients and clients on their life and health challenges. And then I also create these healing poem dances. And that's how I integrate my love and my passions and my talents as a physician, dancer, and poet. And in this video, again, I'll be sharing with you just a part of what I do with clients and patients, which is go over their test results, but using my test results. Let's get started. First set I wanna talk about is um, what we call the CBC, the complete blood count. And that's really looking at things like anemia, one's white blood cell count, uh, platelet, or the agents that help to stop you from over bleeding, so help with clotting, basically. All those test results were great for me. I want to bring attention to one thing that I feel like is a big fear for many people who are not even raw or eating living foods, 
plant diets, but also just eating even cooked plant foods diet. And that is about being anemic. And I will share with you, I have a whole video on this channel about how before becoming plant foods exclusive, before becoming vegan, that's a lifestyle choice, not just a diet choice, that's an ethics choice, not just a diet choice. Um, I was eating a pescatarian diet for 20 something years, 30, I think, years. Yeah. And I was anemic. So I was eating lots of fish. I was eating lots of dairy products. Um, and I was anemic. And I have a whole video explaining why when I moved from being pescatarian to being plant foods exclusive to being vegan, and at that raw vegan, my anemia disappeared, completely healed. And I want to tell you that 10 years later, my hemoglobin and hematocrit, which are um, reflections of uh, how your red blood cell counts are doing and will show up if, and will be low if you are anemic, are completely normal. Hemoglobin 12.7 grams per deciliter, um, hematocrit 39%, 38.6. So that's great. And that hopefully helps to allay fears around anemia and this diet or this lifestyle. Um, platelets were fine. My white blood cell count was fine. It's on the lower side, which is very, very normal for a lot of raw vegans, actually, because we don't have a lot of inflammation in our bodies. And so actually your white blood cell count, which tends to get elevated due to inflammation, um, due to leukocytosis, it's called, will actually be on the lower side side or even lower than normal. And normal, again, um, might not be so healthy for many people. I want to move on to my B12 and folic acid levels, which I checked. Um, I will take an aside and just say that I checked these blood test results not because I was worried about anything or because I was um, experiencing any health challenge. I did it strictly because I wanted to make this video. And it's been about a year and eight months since I had my baby. I hadn't had any routine blood test results since before I was pregnant with Skye. And so I thought it'd be a good time just to check blood test. And 10 years being raw, great time to check. So no complaints, no symptoms before I checked these tests. My B12 level, 791. Uh, picograms per milliliter. That's completely normal. And again, I do take a B12 supplement. My folic acid level, completely normal at 22.3 nanograms per milliliter. I'm not wor worried about folic acid or folate, which is what is found in the food, because I'm eating lots of greens every single day. I'm eating lots of raw living food, um, foods in general, including sprouts and fruits, all of which give folate, um, provide folate. And I have on my channel, I want to say at least two or three what I eat in a day videos. So if you want to know a little bit more about my diet, check those videos out. I'm moving on to um, the cholesterol. <laughs> my cholesterol or my lipid panel, um, total cholesterol 142 milligrams per deciliter, which is completely normal. Uh, Trisglycerides, which people can be really um, afraid of, is actually considered low, but there's we don't worry about low triglycerides. We worry in the medicine world about high triglycerides. And a lot of actually fruit-based diets, uh, people who are eating fruit-based diets get worried about triglycerides. They think, oh, fruit is going to make my triglycerides go up. I eat a lot of fruit. And you can, again, check my What I Eat in a Day video out. My diet is a fruit-based raw vegan diet. My triglyceride level, 33 milligrams per deciliter. My HDL cholesterol is 82 milligrams per deciliter. For a woman and for a man, that is a protective level. That's a high level. And HDL, I call it the happy cholesterol, actually protects you from things like heart disease. So that's a high level and that's a good thing. And uh, my LDL cholesterol, what I call the lousy cholesterol, is 53 milligrams per deciliter, low. And so I have a very low risk based on these numbers of heart issues or vascular disease. I'm gonna move on to the comprehensive metabolic panel, which includes things like creatinine, a sign of kidney function, 
that is completely fine. Normal at 0.82 milligrams per deciliter. Um, my sugar level in this was, a, it's a snapshot. Every time you get a fasting sugar, it's a snapshot. It was 75 milligrams per deciliter, not high at all. In fact, lower end of normal. Normal in this range is considered 76 to 110. For me as a physician, for me more than 100 um, milligrams per deciliter, I start, my eyebrows start raising for fasting glucose. Mine was 75. Again, I eat a ton of fruit. People are always worried about fruit and high sugar. There is evidence that high fruit does not re does not correlate to being pre-diabetic or diabetic or causing you to have insulin resistance. I did get a follow-up test after seeing that glucose level just for the purposes of this video because if you're worried about diabetes, um, it's good to get a fasting sugar level, but it might also be good to get a hemoglobin A1C. A hemoglobin A1C calculates your average sugars over the past about three months. So while you may have a normal sugar one day, it's good to see, have I been having normal sugars in general? I'm not worried about diabetes at all in me. And I have a video on this channel about how fruit actually helps to prevent diabetes. Fruit in the context of a plant-based or plant-exclusive diet, and especially a low-fat diet. Um, but I decided to be complete and get a hemoglobin A1C level checked just for the purpose of this video. My level, 5.2%. So I wanted to lay that myth and fear of high sugar, uh, as in insulin resistance, high blood sugar, and high fruit to rest. High fruit in a plant-exclusive, low-fat diet is wonderful for preventing insulin resistance and diabetes. The other things I want to mention are the liver, right? So my uh, AST and ALT levels, which are... Um, enzymes that are checked uh, that will go up when you have liver inflammation. Those were completely normal at 21 um, and 25 units per liter. Um, I didn't mention my electrolytes. Let's talk about that. Sodium, potassium, chloride, all normal. Um, my albumin level, okay, so we talk about albumin as a protein, and my total protein were completely normal. Albumin is 4.5 grams per deciliter. Um, what else to share with you? Uh, let's talk about lipase, pancreas, right? So people can be worried my pancreas is going to be, is going to be affected on a vegan diet or a high fruit diet. My pancreas is looking wonderful. Lipase level 15.4 units per liter. Um, calcium, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, all normal. Potassium, people always, classic one, people get worried about that. I'm going to have too high potassium eating so many bananas or dates or fruit. My potassium level, 4.8 milliequivalents per liter. Ferritin level, um, also normal at 22 nanograms per liter. And the last thing I want to, uh, one thing I do want to mention here, what is my alkaline phosphatase level? Yeah, alkaline phosphatase um, is an enzyme that's checked and it can be a, a reflection of the liver gallbladder system or the, the bones. And I want to bring this point up because mine is elevated and I've checked alkaline phosphatase before I got pregnant, never elevated. Alkaline phosphatase can be elevated in women who do breastfeeding, especially breastfeeding, prolonged breastfeeding, past about a year. And I've been breastfeeding my child now for about a year and eight, nine months, 22 months. So know that, that if, especially in the, in the context of completely liver, a normal liver test, you feeling great, you know your bones are healthy. Um, alkaline phosphatase can be elevated with prolonged breastfeeding. So I wanted to make that point for those of you breastfeeding mamas out there.
Last thing I want to talk about is vitamin D. I do not take a vitamin D supplement. I get a lot of good, healthy sun time. I expose my skin to the sun in healthy amounts. I try to get naked sun time whenever I can. Um, and I live in the subtropics. So I have not taken a vitamin D supplement ever. Um, and my vitamin D level is, and I mentioned that because the source of vitamin D, the best source of vitamin D is not the diet, it's the sun. My vitamin D level is 33.5 nanograms per milliliter. Um, and that's normal. Some people would argue, there's some physicians and healthcare practitioners out there that would argue, oh, you might want to get a higher level. I look for higher levels in people who are having health challenges. Maybe they having in symptoms of inflammation, hormonal imbalance. But for me, 33 nanograms per deciliter checked after the winter months, I'm fine with that. I do not take a vitamin D supplement. I wanna to say to people who are not living in places where you get good sun, or you know you're not getting good sun, please consider checking a vitamin D level and then repleting your levels if need be by getting good sun exposure if you can and or taking a vitamin D supplement. You can definitely find a vegan or plant-based one. Those are my test results. Um, I feel so good beyond the numbers. I feel amazing on this lifestyle. I've made videos on the reasons I love eating this way and living this way beyond the diet. It's about a lifestyle. It's about, for me, being in harmony as much as possible with nature and the beings with which I share this planet. It's about um, respecting and loving the animals, the planet, and myself. And this is why I continue to choose this way of eating 10 years later. I again, feel like it's not just about the food. I have a book called Delicious Healing that I highly recommend to you if you have not read it and you're somebody who is wanting to live their best life and wanting to live their most vibrant life. And you know it's not just about the food. The book talks about food, but it also talks about other elements of health that really helps you live your best life and helps you also be consistent with the best diet, with the most healthy diet, which I believe is a plant-based, if not plant-exclusive diet. And for me, a living foods diet um, is, for me, is just the creme de la creme. It's the top. It has helped me thrive and feel my best now for 10 years. So check out the book if you're interested. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. I have an audiobook version in which I'm reading the book. Um, so you hear my voice and I'm very proud of that version. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, click like, share it with anyone you think might benefit. Anybody you think is, is worrying about a plant foods diet or a plant-based diet, share it. Let's spread the knowledge. Let dis let's dispel the myths around fruit, around a fruit-based diet, and around plant-exclusive diets. I am sending you so much love and support on your own health journey, wherever in the world you might be. Take care.